Next up, we have offensive lineman Tomas Remack. Questions for Tomas? Well, Thomas, to start with some of the injuries that you guys have faced. I mean, you've been out a little bit. Obviously, why it's been in and out is that, that hurt continuity for an offensive line when you guys are in and out like that, or you figure it out. Yeah, I don't want to say it hurts us, but Coach Coach Moore does a really good job on like rotating who's in. Like he really mixes us around. Like I played with Johnny mm -hmm. quite a few times during fall camp and even during the season. So like, say someone goes down, next man up, and we don't skip a beat. We just keep rolling. I thought I thought he did really well for his first, first start. He's a younger guy. I remember I was in that position. I was a little nervous, but mm -hmm. I think he handled, handled himself really well and uh, helped us win that game. How did you take advantage of the, the I guess, bye week? Yeah, uh, I think the bye week is really important for like me and just everybody on the team. <clears throat> uh, getting rested, recovered, and just like kind of like getting away from the uh, facility because it can be a long season, so you just kind of recharge. And uh, when we got back yesterday, it's just head down and work. Did you um, watch any games Saturday? I watched a couple games, like uh, Ohio State, Penn State uh, okay. game day. So. No conference well, games? No, uh, no. I would have watched Cincinnati if they played, but they also had a bye week. So Thank I really you. try to get away from football when I can. Away, yeah. yeah. A lot of that, that two deep in the, in the offensive line, which is this old redshirt juniors and older. Right. I mean, would, how, how much does that help when every everybody's a vet, everybody right. has had that experience, even if it's not starting experience, it's experience in the room and experience with, every, with each other. Yeah, I'd say it helps a lot, especially like during practice, because especially when that, that second group's not in, they're watching like the first group, and then say you come out, they say they saw something, you did it, and you can talk about it, and like you can trust like what they're saying, because they're not like, Freshmen, like you know, they know what they're talking about, and you can trust what they're saying, and you can take that and work on it. And with a guy like Johnny, who you said, like you said, is a younger guy, what's that like for him to be kind of, you know, grouped in with all of those in older states, but kind of learning through that? Way? But I think it really, because uh, we're all older, we're a really tight group. I think if a young guy comes in, we're gonna like kind of like take him under our wing. Like Johnny knows how to work; he works hard, and I think that really helped him kind of like jump in there and just play with the rest of us. You've got an interesting dynamic this weekend. you got Bartlett on the other side. Yep. And he knows your calls. How do you guys go about that? How do you approach all that stuff? Yeah, I think we approach it the same as any other game. Okay. I mean, uh, Cincinnati, they're a good team, good defense, and we're not going to approach it any different. We're going to do what we do and just play. Has that been mentioned at all in any rooms about changing anything? I guess not. No, no we, we obviously we know Bartlett's on their defense, but we're not going to change anything. What do you see from their defense, from Cincinnati's defense? Uh, yeah, they run a similar defense to Iowa State and Kansas State. I think they had a uh, the coach was formerly at Iowa State, so it's nothing we haven't seen before. So we're just going to continue repping it and. Uh, getting to know all their fronts and calls and stuff. You know, teams have had some success running the ball on them. You noticed that? Yeah, yeah, we noticed that. What, what, what have you seen specifically that's allowed teams to do that? I think it, uh, it starts with the offensive lines. <clears throat> so we, we're really priding, like the offensive line, we're priding ourselves on running the ball. Like I feel like every offensive line in the country does that. And we just have to continue working on fundamentals and not beating ourselves. You able to draw anything from them? I mean, it was earlier in the season that they played Pitt earlier in this year, and they did also lose to Pitt, but they had a pretty solid lead in that first half of that game. So it clearly shows that they had the ability to beat Pitt, a team that you guys played. Right. Anything you're able to draw from that or anything in film to bring that up? Because that's a common opponent that outside of the conference that they have that's not normally the case for you guys. I mean, like uh, earlier in the season, they, they played Pitt, they played them well, and then I think they were up. Against Pitt, yeah, 20 plus points, yeah. And I think it's just about <clears throat> watching film and just continue to work and just finishing games, being consistent. This guy's recruit you at all? You have any conversations with him when you were in high school? A little bit, but uh, I wasn't. I don't believe I was ever offered. Okay. What do you think of your run game overall? Evaluate what you guys have done in the run game. You know, I thought certain games we've done really well. Other games, I feel like <clears throat> we haven't we haven't played to the best of our ability. And that just goes back to working and because uh, being an offensive lineman, you need to be consistent. That's something I'm personally uh, trying to get better at, just being consistent, being the same guy every uh, week in and week out. 
told us last year, won five of the final six games, including the bowl. Do you draw back on that at all as you're looking for a strong finish you know, in this final month? Is there anything you recall that kind of enabled that to happen last season? Yeah, well, big uh, emphasis on the month of November is just winning out because we look back, uh, or personally, I look back like, to, like uh, during the summer, and I'm thinking we're, we're going to be a really good team. And we are a really good team, but our record, we're 4-4, four and four, and we just have to finish this month strong like we did last year, and we just have to work. We have to like, pull the guys around us to keep working. What were the things that were said last year in the month of November? Because like you just said, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crucial month for you guys. What were the things that were said and done last year to kind of rally the troops like that, and you guys started doing that already? Yeah, yeah uh, it was said last year, and we started talking about it this year. It's just like thinking like uh, day by day. You don't want to think like weeks ahead or like, oh, after the season, what's going to happen? You just got to think like today was uh, our off day. So we're thinking come in, do extra work, recovery, film, and then tomorrow we're practice, and Thursday, uh, Wednesday practice. So we're just day by day putting our head down and working. We're not looking into the future. Is that hard to do or is that easy to do? I mean, just what's, what's kind of the, the, the vibe of, of this group in terms of just being able to kind of compartmentalize that day to day? I think like naturally as like humans, we're just trying to like think to the future. So I feel like like if you do it by yourself, it's hard. But like when you have a team around you and like the support group that we have here, it's easier to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we just like kind of like bring us all together and just try thinking day by day. Anything else? Tomas, um, they're big guy, uh, young in the middle. Seems like he's a, I don't know, probably one of the better defensive linemen inside, right? You saw him before, I guess. What's he like as an opponent? Seems like a lot of people speak highly of him. Yeah, he, he's a really good uh, opponent. I mean, if you play at this level, you play hard, you play physical, and everybody tries to prove himself week in and week out, and you just have to stick to your fundamentals and what you know and go out there and do your best. You mentioned the, the, the similar schemes to Iowa State and Kansas State, three-man front, right? Yep. But what, what were the issues, in your opinion, uh, with some of the things that they did in those games, Iowa State, Kansas State particularly? Yeah, I would say the, the biggest thing we had uh, trouble with, but we've been working on since, is like, Three men front and getting onto getting up to the second level, yes sir, and that's something we've worked on week in and week out, and we worked it last week during our bi-week practices. We're going to continue working it this week and uh, be prepared for Saturday. Is it because of the, the, the moving parts and the smaller guys that you got to reach, or is that part of it with the safety, that kind of thing? That's part of it, yeah. But it's just like like I said earlier, getting back to our fundamentals, knowing what to do, where to be, and that's communication up front. Starts with the AT, does a good job. And just like communication from center to guard, guard to tackle, and tackle tight end, just being all on the same page and where we need to be, when we need to be there. Okay. Uh, way, back, way back when I was in high school, I had a sociology teacher named Mr. Simpson who told us, if you have a, if you have a C, you are nowhere. You guys are four and four. What, what, what does that make you feel like at this point in the season? At this point, obviously, it doesn't feel good to be a four and four football team. But like, I'm not a, like I said earlier. We're not looking like in the future, but thinking month of November, we have four games, and we can win these four games and finish eight and four, and go on to a bowl game and win that bowl game. It'd be a pretty good season. So we're just we're not like down on ourselves or anything. We're just continuing to work, and uh, it starts with Cincinnati this week. I mean, you're also still in the conference race. I think 14 of the 16 yep. are still in contention. Yep. Are you guys all aware of that? We think about it, yeah, but we try not to look too much into it because the Big 12 is it's a crazy conference. Anything can happen, and right. we kind of if we do what we're supposed to do, we'll be we'll be up there. Is that any kind of a motivator at all? Because you still have that. Right. I mean, even at a, a form for record, you still have that opportunity. It's right. still there. It's yeah. does, it, does, it, does that serve as any motivator at all because of that? Yeah, it's a little. It, it's obviously a motivator because like when you're looking at the standings, it's like we're we're right in there. It's like. We're not down and out, so we're continuing to work every day, and we know we can get where we want to be in this month of November. Sean mentioned that when he saw the scores of Iowa State, Kansas State, kind of some upsets this past week, kind of almost he almost was a little down, like I wish it was us. We right. could have we could have got him. But the message you're kind of sending is almost the glass half full take that if they're able to lose, that actually as long as we win. Well, yeah, obviously we, we want we would have wanted to have those games without a doubt, but I feel like in the position we're in, we just have to look at. Like, we're, we're in control of our own destiny. When we went out, we're going to be where we want to be. Does that blow your mind a little bit? 
14, at the eight games into the season or nine weeks, can we just say 14 of 16 teams or however many teams are, are still available and, and eligible to, to, to get that done? Yeah, I think that's like, it's pretty wild to think about. And just with that in mind, we know these next four games are going to be really competitive because they're thinking the same thing we're thinking. They have a shot, so. I was going to throw out, would you like to see West Virginia Cincinnati kind of be, Brown talked about he wants it to be played every year. That's not going to be the case, but would you like to see it? Yeah, I saw I saw a little bit as a rivalry, but I think that, I think it's up to the fans to make it a rivalry. So it's kind of like us and Pitt, the, like fans hate each other. So we'll see what the fans decide about it. Geographically, it's the next closest right. thing in the conference. Thank you. Thank you, guys.